हेलो यस सर गुड आफ्टरनून शैली स्टार्ट मैं जस्ट अ मिनट सर गुड आफ्टरनून टू ईच एंड एवरी वन प्रसेंटेड हियर एंड टूडे द डे फोर ऑफ नैप ऑफ दी पी and now i request dr raja mani sir to deliver the welcome address good afternoon everyone present here the pg department of corporate citizenship in association with iqac of dpj college organize the professional enrichment for faculties development programs and strategic management practice for nac accreditation I extend my hearty welcome to all the heads, associates, and assistant professors, faculties, research scholars from various colleges and educational institution all over India. Today is day four of the faculty development program under the criteria four of NAC and the topic of infrastructure and learning resources. by our today's resource person dr avs ram kumar sir assistant professor ram krishna mission vivekananda college chennai he has professional experience in various fields he has prominent professional experience as head of the department assistant professors in various estimated institution around the chennai He worked as a PhD viva voice examiner, security board member, doctorate committee member, and many more. He published many publications and presented many paper presentations till today. He contributed as an external member of our academic audit on various esteemed institution around Chennai. Our resource person for today has an enormous achievement. a part of from his achievements he is a good person it is our pleasure to have you sir we would love to have you today sir over it to sir. over it over to you sir thank you yeah good afternoon to everyone it is my immense pleasure to be part of this uh, fdp program is it all is it audible for you all is it audible yes sir yeah okay it, uh, i'm very much delighted to be part of this fdp program and today we'll start with uh, a presentation criterion criteria 4 yeah criterion 
we'll just uh, start with the basic uh, content. Criteria 4 deals with infrastructure and learning resources. And uh, to start with, we'll have a basic idea about the NAC assessment process. Taking cognizance of the diversity in the kinds of institutions, HEI, higher education institutions, have been grouped into three categories, namely universities, autonomous colleges, and affiliated constituent colleges. The assessment process will be carried out in three stages. As stated earlier, it will comprise three main components, self-study report, student satisfaction survey, and the peer team report. The SSR has 84 metrics for autonomous colleges covering seven criteria described. The SSR has two kinds of metrics. One, those requiring quantifiable facts and figures as data, which have been indicated as quantitative metrics. And two, those metrics requiring descriptive responses and are accordingly named qualitative metrics. Table 1 depicts the details here. Distribution of metrics and KI across the criteria totally based on the type of higher education institutions, that is autonomous colleges. We have got seven criteria and key indicators 34. All these things which will be discussed further. Qualitative matrices 35, quantitative matrices 50, and total matrices comprising of qualitative and quantitative put together is 85. In the revised framework, not only the academic and administrative aspects of institution functioning, but also the emerging issues have been included. The seven criteria to serve as basis for assessment of higher education institutions are curriculum aspects, teaching, learning and evaluation, research innovations and extension, infrastructure and learning resources, which we are going to discuss today, student support and progression, governance, leadership and management, institutional values and best practices. So here you have got the distribution of weights across key indicators. Curriculum wise, first one curriculum aspect, curriculum design and development, 50, academic flexibility, 30, curriculum enrichment, 50, feedback system, 20. So total, 150. Similarly, you have got with regard to second criteria, student enrollment and profile, 20, catering to student diversity, 30, teaching learning process, 50, teacher profile and quality, 50, evaluation process and reforms, 50, student performance and learning outcomes, 50, so student satisfaction survey. So the total points comes to 300. Next one, pertaining to research, innovation, and extension. So 3.1, that is promotion of research and facilities, 20. Resource mobilization for research, 10. Innovation ecosystem, 10. Research publication awards, 30. Consultancy, 10. Extension activities, 50. Collaboration, 20. And total comes to 150. So infrastructure and learning resources, physical facilities, 30. Library as a learning resource, 20. IT infrastructure, 30. Maintenance of campus infrastructure, 20. So total comes to 100. Next, student support and progression. Student support, 30. Student progression, 30. Student participation in activities, 30. 
alumni engagement 10 total comes to 11. Next one, governance, leadership and management, institutional vision and leadership 15, strategy development and deployment 10, faculty empowerment strategies 30, financial management resource mobilization 15, internal quality assurance system 30, total comes to the seventh criteria, institutional values and social responsibilities 15, best practices 30, institutional distinctiveness 20. So total comes to 100. So comes to the total score of 1000. So the criterion 4, we are going to focus on criterion 4 today, infrastructure and learning resources. See the adequate and optimal use of the facilities available in an institution are essential to maintain the quality of academic and other programs on the campus. It also requires information on how every constituent of the institution, students, teachers and staff benefit from these facilities. The expansion of facilities to meet future development is included among other concerns. The focus of criterion 4 is captured in the four key indicators. The first one is physical facilities. Second one, library as a learning resource. Third one is IT infrastructure. Fourth one is maintenance of campus infrastructure. So, let us have a briefing about physical facility. So, when you talk about physical facility, we should have adequate infrastructure facilities, which are the key for effective and efficient conduct of educational programs. So, whenever you talk about an institution, the first and foremost importance and appearance is only infrastructure. So, many people nowadays they get carried away by seeing the infrastructure first. That comes to the eyes first. The growth of infrastructure has to keep pace with academic development. So academic development as well as infrastructure development should go hand to hand in an institution. The other supportive facilities on the campus are developed to contribute to the effective ambience for curriculum, extracurricular and administrative activities. The provision of expenditure and the budget is made annually for maintenance and replenishment of physical facilities which will ensure their availability on a continual basis. So, this physical facilities it has to be maintained. It has to be taken care continuously. So when you talk about this physical facility that is about infrastructure, why infrastructure is very important for an institution? So the college campus is center of the lives of thousands of students. In many cases, they are actual work. And they spend more maximum time in college campus. So it is the second home for students. So it has to be maintained, it has to be kept clean, it has to be maintained in a proper manner. So design of educational process is affecting inter interrelated factors which came through research, natural risks, light, air quality. See when they construct a building, they have to take care of the ventilation, air quality, lighting, stimulation, color. So you have got even a color symbol. When a building is painted, it has to be painted in a inside, especially inside the classrooms, inside auditorium, everything should be in the light color. Okay, color syndrome is a concept whereby it helps to focus. So the concentration of the students depends on the color syndrome. Individualization, so flexibility of learning spaces. So it should be student friendly. 
Next is infrastructure. So when you talk about infrastructure, higher education institutions should ensure the availability of fit for purpose infrastructure. So fit for purpose here means it should really serve the purpose for which it has been considered. So plan by considering present and future needs of the institution. Adequate to provide conductive atmosphere to achieve the program purposes. Laboratories must be well equipped, maintained, and updated as per the needs of both subjects. See, when they frame the subjects or when you have the syllabus or when you have the board, they should also see the facilities available. So they have to plan the subjects or based on the subjects, they have to plan the laboratories in order to carry out the content. So security and safety of the learning environment, physical facilities and support facilities. So when we talk about physical infrastructure for teaching learning, so the traditional method, classroom method, classrooms, learning support facilities, library and information resources, computing and IT facilities that is reasonably modern and scalable, well-equipped laboratories, auditorium, seminar halls, and you need to even highlight if some ultra-high facilities, suppose you have in your institutions. Support facilities. When you talk about support facilities, these are all like a value addition facility, hostel, canteen facilities, sports and recreation facilities, healthcare center, student center, transportation facilities, facilities for cultural activities. So these are all categorized under support facilities. The next one. See, when you talk about our infrastructure, in infrastructure, there are a lot of documents to be maintained for any infrastructure. One is master plan of the institution, a summary of classrooms in table form, tabulated form, room number, capacity, ICT facilities. So when you talk about ICT, information and communication technology, facility and with regard to area, details of laboratories with equipment, details of library, summary of recreational facilities and sports facilities, summary of recent improvement and planned improvement of these facilities, summary of safety and security of patients, bills, orders, audited statements of expenditure, geotag photographs, and uh, this master plan, you can also have a map, entire master map of your institution. Next one. So while writing qualitative answers, you have to use quantitative numerical information, which will be discussed further. If number is small, convert into percentage. Show the adequate and relevance content. Focus on optimal use. So when you talk about optimal use, to the best. With regard to library, with regard to lab facilities, with regard to ICT. So whatever facilities you have in your institution, you have to put to the optimal use, to the best use. Use a capacity of the facility. So user capacity, so based on the user capacity, you can avail the facility. If government sponsored facility, show some outreach use. Outreach use here with regard to social benefit. Highlight the achievements of learning. Various policies, procedures, SOPs, which are in place. So SOPs are standard operating procedures. So tracking of its usability, that is tracking of its usability is to get the number of users. So how many people are accessing the library, how many people are using the lab facilities. So whatever facilities you introduce in an institution, 
we should also track the number of users. So when a facility is being so many amount is invested and uh, an institution is carrying out uh, providing a facility, it should also track the number of users, whether it is viable. And if, so if it, the number of users are less, they should encourage more people to use the facility. Next one. So this is a infrastructure and learning resource, the key elements. This with regard to qualitative and quantitative metrics. So physical facility, library, IT, maintenance. So you have been given with regard to qualitative and quantitative metrics. Breakup. This one. The institution, we have to have a, this is with regard to the first criteria, that is the infrastructure. So they have to check with regard to the qualitative metrics. The institution has adequate infrastructure and physical facilities for teaching, learning, classrooms, laboratories, Overall general description should be given with finite words comprising of flame infrastructure is as per the regulations of regulating materials. Not to mention quantitative information such as numbers and ratios. Try to show it as per the standards, ISO standards. Adequate and relevant to carry out teaching learning activities to achieve the center of policy of optimal use, policy of augmentation as per the growing needs, goals of sustainable development. So whether they are put into optimal use, whether they are facing updations, changes, similarly with regard to existence of well-formed procedures for its maintenance. Next one, next qualitative metrics. The institution has adequate facilities for cultural activities, sports, games, indoor, outdoor, gymnasium, yoga center, etc. So, describe the adequacy of facilities for sports, games, cultural activities, which include specification about the area, size, year of establishment and user rate within a maximum of five hours. Include the details about playground with its standard measurements. Mention of having specialized pitches, tracks, so what for example football, board, volleyball, table tennis, whatever indoor outdoor, so all the details has to be specified clearly. When you talk about indoor stadium, funding, establishment here, the facilities developed for outdoor games. Next one is gymnasium. Its technical details with capacity. Yoga center, fitness, then its ambience and activities. Cultural activities, musical instruments, photography facilities, different facilities for dance, drama, even if you have a studio. So all these things can be brought into notable achievement in sports and cultural activities. So whatever achievements, notable achievements with regard to representation with regard to state, national, university. So all the achievements of students has to be recorded properly. So next, with regard to qualitative metrics, infrastructure learning resources, physical facilities here, yeah. so teaching, learning, classrooms, ICT, culture and sports activities. So all the details has to be uploaded 
here percentage of expenditure excluding salary for infrastructure development and augmentation year year wise data year wise during the last five years that is the expenditure for infrastructure development and augmentation excluding salary so year wise data has to be recorded the formula for computing is also been given total expenditure for infrastructure development and augmentation excluding salary during last five years divided by total expenditure excluding salary so you need also to make a note some special point with regard to cctv surveillance of full campus certificate of building safety from disaster management authorities fire safety certificate from the local authorities certification laboratories workshop facilities from some standard organization we can also state of art hardware software internet of teaching natural language processing capabilities animated modules and videos remote access cap capabilities live streaming safe class option lecture capturing capturing system artificial intelligence enabled system so all those comes under innovative infrastructure development next comes criteria next component comes library which is a very powerful learning resource the library holdings in terms of books journals and other learning materials and technology aided learning mechanisms which enable students to acquire information knowledge and the skills required for their study programs the recent development in the field due to availability of digital means the functioning of the library has undergone a drastic change automation of library using the ilms use of e journals and books providing remote access to e resources in the library have become a matter of necessity providing for these and such other developments as well as utilizing them well are important indicators of the quality of an academic institution key indicator library as a learning resource so library is automated with digital facilities using integrated library management system adequate subscription to e resources and journals are made the library is optimally used by faculty and students so whether we have to see whether it is been optimally used how many students are benefited and faculties are benefited by the library management system library is automated using integrated library management system data requirement is needed for last 5 years which has to be uploaded and when you upload we need to give the name of the ilms software nature of automation fully or partially the version year of automation when it regard when additional information regarding purchase order screenshot of the purchase order photographs of detailed operations etc next comes the institution whether they subscribe e journals e books databases remote access to e resources and list is more e copy of the letter subscription membership in the name of higher education institution expenditure incurred for subscription and membership screenshots of facility claimed with the name of higher education institutions 
soft copies of printed books is not considered actually as e book see now these all these things are very much expected from the library point of view and usage of e journals e books publications from the faculty members so all are taken into account for the development next one with regard to quantitative measure average annual expenditure for purchase of books e books and subscription to journals e journals during the last 5 years so consolidated extract of expenditure the last 5 years with regard to purchase of books journals it has been attested by another institution and the chart of so audited income and expenditure statement highlighting property like next quantitative measure percentage of per day usage of library by teachers and students so this is very very important because we can easily develop an infrastructure we can easily purchase a software we can subscribe but we need to record the number of people who walk in to library daily the footfalls and the login data for online access so data even we can have an excellent infrastructure glass room but attendance is very important. when you talk about attendance how many students they attend class with you and when the number of absentees are more we should also track with regard to absentees several year when you talk about library we should maintain a consistency in people using the library facility so data for the latest complete academic year is required approved last year, last year page of accession register details method of computing per day usage of library number of users using library through e access number of physical users accessing library certified e copy of the ledger for food falls for last 5 days certified screenshot of the data for the last 5 days for online access during dbb any random friday data will be asked when it about dbb that is known as data validation and verification so when they do data validation and verification they ask randomly any friday data so we cannot pick up the data we have to do it on a consistent basis must we should encourage people we should create an awareness and make people to visit library regularly probably we can even have library hour library session or one hour for library visit so that we can increase the number of users to library so expenditure here yeah, this is a formula tabulated sheet expenditure for purchase of books which has to be year wise and it has to be maintained for the last so this is a third component in criteria for it infrastructure the institution adopts policies and strategies for adequate technology deployment and maintenance the ict facilities and other learning resources are adequately available in the institution for academic and administrative purposes the staff and students have the access to technology and information retrieval on current and relevant issues the institution deploys and employs icts for a range of activities so when we talk about IT infrastructure. Institution frequently updates its IT facilities and provides sufficient bandwidth for internet connection. So we need to describe IT facilities, including Wi-Fi, with date, nature of updation, available internet bandwidth, within a maximum of 500 volts. So when we talk about uh, 
institutional frequently updates its IT facilities, including Wi-Fi. We need to describe the IT facilities, including Wi-Fi with date and nature, within a maximum of 500 words. The contents are regarding updation, addition or deletion or replacement, Wi-Fi bandwidth, hardware configuration, software, when it comes to software, Windows, MS software, Stanley, institutional, ERP. So a lot of institutions are following the ERP system for recording all the data with regard to attendance, with regard to uh, the mark sheet, the students, when students log in. So a lot of uh, upgradation are done with regard to ERP. Network, next one is network facilities. CCTV surveillance facilities, UPS facility, cyber security, when it comes to cyber security, so antivirus, internet access management software, the blocking of specific websites. So all these things are made up. When I talk about LMS, institutional repositories, DSpace, ILMS. When I talk about this space, it is an open source for accessing data. So, in this space, you can just access all data, library information, materials, including videos, audios, text. So, it's an open source where you can access data. This space. So, college website, college app. So, all these things are has become the order of the day. It is, so uh, it creates a lot of awareness. So everyone are accessing through this college website and college app. So upload all these details. And if any purchase order, accounts details pertaining to it can also be uploaded. Next one is student computer ratio. The data for the latest completed academic year, number of computers, number of students, number of computers available for student use only, bills and documents with regard to purchase of computers, stock registers. Data should be given only pertaining to latest completed academic year. Computer relating to office and faculty use will not be considered. So those will not be considered. This is with regard to student computer ratio. Next one with regard to internet connection, which is a quantitative matrix. So you are categorized into five levels, A, B, C, D, E. When you have greater than 50 Mbps, the speed speed of internet. A category, B is 30 to 50, C is 10 to 30, D is 5 to 10, minimum 5, maximum 10, E is less than 5 Mbps. So we need to specify with regard to the plan and bill indicating the connection plan, speed, bandwidth, and the higher education institution's name for one month, either for a month or for a quarter or for the last academic year. So which type of plan you are opting for? So only least line connectivity will be considered. E-copy of the agreement with the service provider should also be maintained. So service provider will be the service provider, whichever company. So they have to enter into an agreement and copy of the agreement will be attached. Auditor account statement pertaining to it. The student's computer ratio, this has already been shown. And the formula, student number of students is two. It's just a ratio for indicating the student's computer usage. So next one institution has 
dedicated audio visual center, mixing equipment, editing facility, media studio, lecture capturing system L LCS, and related hardware and software for e content development. So we need to give a write up with regard to this in a qualitative matrix. And the, these are certain points to be noted, especially for autonomous institutions. Institution as an IT policy covering Wi Fi, cyber security, and allocated budget for updating its IT facility from time to time. So, budget has to be framed for updating all these things. Next, the quantitative measure. Institution has facilities for e content development facilities available for e content development. That is, media center, audio visual center, lecture capturing system, mixing equipment, and software for editing. So, next one is the, the last component in infrastructure and learning resources, maintenance of campus infrastructure. So maintenance is a much more responsible factor because everyone are focusing on the development and many people fail in the maintenance of campus infrastructure. That is having adequate infrastructure is not enough for effective institutional function. So many institutions have very big ground, very big building, infrastructure, facilities, but maintaining the facility at regular intervals is a challenging factor. So having adequate infrastructure is not enough for institution functioning, but regular maintenance and providing the replacement for infrastructure is essential. It is necessary that the institution has sufficient resources allocated for regular upkeep of the infrastructure and there are effective mechanisms for the upkeep of the infrastructure facilities and promote the optimum use of the same. Average percentage of expenditure incurred on maintenance of infrastructure, physical and academic support facilities, including salary pump, that is building renovation. So building renovation has to be done periodically based on the age of the building to maintain the age. Here, when we talk about the building renovation, coloring, POP, POP is nothing but plaster of Paris, partitions. So all these renovations have to be from, done from time to time. Repairing of equipments, furniture, plumbing work, hardware, electricity, property tax, maintenance for UPS, etc. So human resources appointed, outsourced for maintenance work has to be recorded. So you have you should have a separate team for maintenance. And many institutions have a separate team. Department, maintenance department, separate department for maintaining the entire college. Geotag photographs of maintenance work has to be recorded because to see that whether, so when it has been done, whether it is done on regular intervals. They can also track with regard to the time intervals. Assign budget for maintenance and actual expenditure occurred with auditor statement of accounts. So whatever amount that has been assigned, budgeted for maintenance and actual, both has to be maintained so that we can know what, what is the actuals and what is the budgeted. We can also study about the deviations, variance with regard to actuals and budget. So there are established systems and procedures for maintaining and utilizing physical, academic and support facilities. That is library, 
laboratory, sports complex, computers, classrooms, etc. A policy detailed procedure that is open tendering system, outsourcing agencies, the method of reimbursement, which is followed by the exemption, should be described. Upload policy documents, work order letters, agreements, bill pay receipts, LMC, CDC reports. So here LMC, CDC reports. LMC is nothing but the local management committee. CDC is a college development. Here, you have a key indicator with regard to maintenance of campus infrastructure. Percentage expenditure incurred on campus, maintenance of physical facilities and academic support facilities, excluding salary component with the last pages. So, this has to be recorded and the formula pertaining to the computation has also been given. There are established systems and procedures for maintaining and utilizing physical and academic support facilities, laboratory, library, sports, sports complex, computers, classrooms, etc. So we need to upload all the details and the write-up with regard to which is a qualitative issue. So I just conclude with this content and here I would also try to highlight, see, in infrastructure, See, in many institutions, there are three areas which you have to, it is a traditional system whereby when you talk about three M's, men, material, machine, body. When you talk about all these things, infrastructure plays a key role because a person when a person enters into an institution, first he is very much impressed by the appearance of the institution, infrastructure, classrooms. In fact, then only they see the teachers. The teachers are the foundation for an institution. They provide a lot of content, benefit to students. But other than that, when a parent comes for an admission for anything, the infrastructure comes in front of him. The laboratories, facilities, the audiovisual rooms, library. So all these facilities forms a base and which comes into the I see all other things are working behind the screen. The infrastructure no one can hide. Even the peer teams get into a, a college for inspection purpose. No one needs to explain about the infrastructure. See, all the other documents, they have to inspect, they have, uh, people have to explain, they have to give a PPT. All other content has to be explained. But with, with regard to infrastructure, it is self-explanatory. When they see the infrastructure, when they get into various aspects, with regard to library, with regard to lab and other things, by seeing the content, by seeing the facilities, it is self-explanatory. So this infrastructure plays a vital role and uh, the only thing is initially a huge amount of investment is required in infrastructure and a subsequent amount has to be allocated every year in maintenance of infrastructure with regard to sports, library. So I have highlighted various aspects in infrastructure where a fully area has to be focused and a team, you have a separate team for everything, for example lab, for example sports. So each and every one can be given a responsibility and they can maintain a 
separate role and responsibility. We can also maintain a separate records, registers for maintaining all these things. Okay. So finally, with this, I wind up my session. And uh, uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity. I really thank DBJ College Management Principal and the faculty members for giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts with regard to the criteria. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I request Department Representative J. Makesh to deliver the oath of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. I am J. Makesh from Department of Corporate Secretaryship of Dandraj Bay Jain College. It's my privilege to propose the oath of thanks for today's session. I hope today we all had a greatest takeaway from the webinar on NAC. I would like to thank the management and our principal, Dr. C. Murugeshan sir, our professor in charge, Dr. M. Shaktivel Murugan sir, for being a supportive hand for each and every initiative we made. And the IQAC team of Dandraj Bay Jain College. And also, I am very much obligated to thank the resource person of today. Dr. A.V.S. Ram Kumar, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda College. For, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable seminar on uh, uh, infrastructure and learning resources. It was a greatest takeaway from you, sir. It was great indeed to have you today, sir. A heartfelt thank you to all the participants from various colleges and educational institutions all over India. Without you all, this day wouldn't be possible and also the technicians who work behind and efficiently for the betterment of the program. I once again thank all of, the, all of them for making this day four FDP seminar successful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.